It's a strange days indeed. Yeah. TexarkanaFYI.com and Horn Hog Radio, all the stuff. Um, pretty serious thing that we want to talk about now. You know, a bunch of laws uh, went into effect mm -hmm. on September 1st one, in Texas, one being House Bill 1925. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm meeting with, with Cody Howard. Um, Executive Director of Mission Texarkana, uh, heads up church under the bridge, very, very active in our, our community downtown and uh, a lot of work with the homeless and the mm -hmm. food insecure. Right. Can you tell us, because I know that this is now being enforced, Right. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about House Bill 1925 and what we're doing in Texarkana? Okay, so um, I've received several calls. Uh, of people who are passionate about uh, the homeless not being put out of where they are and things like this and there's some misunderstanding about where the bill originated and I would just like to make known that the bill did not originate here no. <laughs> like we weren't looking to run anybody off property we weren't looking into all that I'm gonna um, come, I mean no one's ever said this for sure but uh, more than anything it was the situation in Austin yeah it's gotten terrible it's gotten out of control so but then you know, once one of those bills comes out, you can't, uh, you have to enforce it. It's a, uh, you know, you just have to, or the, that's how the law works, or it gets and this away is, from you. This is the camping in public. Yeah, so thing. the camping in public is what we're talking about, um, where the homeless, or anyone, it's not even the homeless the way the bill is written, the way the bill is written, um, that you have to even be careful about camping out in your backyard. You know, like they have to make it a blanket uh, bill where you can't, you know, you can't say it well if you're homeless or not. So I had a guy up here whose house had been condemned and he wanted a tent to put in his backyard and I still, I warned him, I was like, hey, here's the deal. Like you can't uh, camp within public view. And that's another thing. It has to be within public view. Um, the public has to, if you're out of sight, um, it's not wrapped up into this bill. Okay. Uh, so it's like if you've got, if you're visible from like a public area mm -hmm. or public roadway right then that's that's a violation that's right and you know in the homeless community i always tell our folks it's always better to be out of sight you know because you're out of sight you're out of mind and nobody's worried about you but it's when they start coming on to like where the public views you on main drags every day um you get people who are upset about those things so so that's the first thing it has to be within public view and the second thing is that people kind of don't really understand about it is that it's not um, it's not on site. So if I'm a police officer and I'm driving down Fifth Street where the encampment is up here, uh, if I'm a police officer, I just can't stop and say, "Hey, y'all got to get out of here." There's this new bill. It has to be uh, called in by the public. It has to be a public concern. All right. So it's not like the police are out looking, going, "Oh, mm -hmm. it looks like a tent in the bushes. Let me go check." If somebody calls and says, hey, here's a complaint. That's right. I then they you. have to take care of it. So okay. I can promise you, Texarkana, Texas, Police Department, uh, they, I've worked with a lot of different PDs, and they are super kind to our homeless. I mean, yeah. you've seen it, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you've oh, seen it. Yeah. And they act as, you know, buddy, as counselor, as therapist on a bad day to our homeless community. So TTPD, we work like lockstep together. Mm -hmm. And they're not out here looking to make life no, difficult no, for no. people. And they are not trying to incriminate, uh, criminalize poverty or homelessness. No. Now, there have been, and, and, and this is known, there, there have been a couple of arrests, but that's because of other factor right it's not it wasn't the camping that got them right it, it but if if someone makes this complaint or this is the way I understand it mm -hmm. if someone makes a complaint and um, say they come to my camp and they say hey you can't be camping here you got to move on but they find that um, I'm in possession of something mm -hmm. well then I mean it, I, I would oh, get yeah. in trouble for that what happens to their stuff does it just I mean do they do we just wash away the campsite or um, so by law, they have to take all their stuff with them if you're arrested under this law. Uh -huh. uh, they have to take all their stuff, um, but they can also write a ticket. So they've okay. got the choice, hey, can I get this person's stuff or do we need to give them a ticket? 
Um, so, but on the, the second time, like if they have an FTA, a failure to appear down here, sure. and then there's a warrant released for non-payment of the ticket, then they don't have to take their stuff. So, gotcha. like, yeah, it's, I mean, we try to help, you know, like I've told our folks, like, and the police, you know, that, hey, if y'all need us to come get somebody's stuff, or help in any way like let us know and they have they've been working with us just about every day I get a call so like we're trying to work make it as painless as possible with our people but in a lot of ways man it's not good for the city to have camping in public view it's not yeah and so I know a lot of people and here's the deal about panhandling about camping in public view I've seen it on Cheers and Jeers and everywhere else. They get on there and say, well, you can't tell me what to do. I can give it to somebody if I want to without them stopping to really think about, is it making the situation better? If our economy improves, there'll be more jobs and there'll be more, you know, less people on the street. So it's like this weird area where we have to walk. You know, for me, yeah, for me, it's, uh, there, it, it, let me put it out here like this. This is the way I understand it. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact that here in downtown Texarkana, with the Homeless Coalition, uh, Randy Sam, Salvation Army, Mission Texarkana, all these different organizations, there are so many resources mm -hmm. available. They are. A and a lot of these go to waste because there may not be somebody to, to give them to. But in return, you kind of have to follow some directions like don't be on drugs. Yeah. You know, don't be violent. Don't be cussing yeah. people. And right. Do, that kind of thing. Um, you follow a few rules. Um, there's curfews. Right. It's the ones that don't want to follow these rules and do their own thing that think, all right, I'm going to go out to North State Line. And, yeah, yeah. And, and panhandle. Mm -hmm. Ninety nine percent. Right. Yeah. Um, well. So, so I, I tell people, you know, if you feel like giving, if, if something moves you to give a dollar, I, yeah, do what you want to do. But do understand there are resources and there are better ways to help these individuals. Yeah than giving them a dollar. That's right. And so just to get it out there right now, 50% of the people that you see panhandling on Richmond Road, they have apartments. Okay. And they're, now I'm not saying they're out there scamming the public. That's not the case. Like It's like in, a job to them. In one case, I know uh, there's a, a, a elderly man that shows out there sometimes. Some of them are just lonely. And like even bad human contact is contact. They're just lonely. Mm -hmm doesn't want to sit in the apartment all day. There's other people who they've gotten into an apartment because we're busy housing them. We're housing yeah, the, oh yeah, the panhandlers. Yeah, and, and you're very good at that too. Yeah, by the way. well thank you. And they have like car breakdown, can't get to their jaw. And so there's these things that happen so they jump back out there. Yeah, we're all in these, get these we, we've all gone through different circumstances mm -hmm. that put us in awkward positions yeah. and it's the same thing. When you're yeah. on the edge, it's even harder sometimes. So, I mean, I get it. Yeah. I understand. And some of the times the But I'd like for them to get some real help that's available down That's there. the thing. And so people say, well, you can't tell me what to give. Like, I'll give what I want, which is fine. It's America. Like, I yeah, get it. Yeah, like, yeah. whatever. Give what you want. But, like, it is good to stop and think about. Um, we had one man out there for years, and he couldn't read. Well, he was making money panhandling. Well, we've got a literacy council that we pay for right over here. It's right. a nonprofit. He could have gone for free, you know, and um, turned out that he could. And he learned to read. But as all those years working as a panhandler, people hand him that money thinking, I'm doing something good. In the long run, it was not good. And it was keeping him it's toxic homeless. Charity. Toxic. Yeah, it gets toxic. And so people have deep seated problems in their lives. And for them to get help, man, a lot of times, um, $10, especially stuff like a $100 bill or something like that, like I understand it makes you feel good, mm -hmm. but in the end, you got to also ask the question, is it about how I feel or is it about doing good to this person? So, Absolutely. you know, that's where it gets toxic where you start helping people because it makes me feel good. Well, is that charity really? Or is it, you know, like pride? working out something we, like a weird deal with somebody so anyway um just to say this is like panhandling i don't think is good for anybody like i i just don't i spend a lot of, and these are people i love i know I, and you talk to them and you and that's just I know the thing them. I, I, you know people were talking about oh they cleared the trees up there on north state line mm -hmm. 
you walk amongst those trees. I've seen you out here in, in the fields back over behind the railroad track. I mean, you visit these people. Well, that I know them, and I form relationships with them. Yeah. And nothing good happened in those trees. Yeah. I can promise you, if you're griping about the trees being cut and the homeless being run out, man, you're griping about a, a place that's almost provided for crime to go down, yeah. such as sexual assault you, you has happened there. You saw the trees gone. You didn't see all the needles on the on the ground. That's right. That's right. Or like the sexual assaults that were picked up there, or mm -hmm. uh, the physical assaults, the DUIs, and it was just it was a place for it. And and you know that's. That's the thing about all the programs downtown. There, there's resources. There's things that, that can be done. They don't want to follow the rules. They go to where they think they can do what they want to do. And we still love them and care for them. And provide, and provide for them. A absolutely. Come down here, get some food, you know, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. but, but if you continue to just, I mean, it'll just get worse. Yeah. Don't you it's don't entitlement. You so yeah. now, with them clearing that out, that moves us back to the camping. Right. Are we seeing more campers now on the Arkansas side of town than than Texas because of this law? Um, well, just in the last, it's trending towards the Arkansas side now. Uh, but it's been trending towards the Arkansas side all summer. I don't know what's going on, but yeah. they're they're tending to move onto Arkansas yeah. side. I'm spending a lot more time over there, but um, that happens. It goes back and forth. So, um, but yeah, that's that's bottom line. I think we all want the well-being of our city and the welfare of our city. We want our economy to be strong. We want to help people. We want to be merciful and kind to those who are struggling with mental illness, addiction, and all those things. And you can do all those things together. Mm -hmm. And for somebody to say, like, you can't do them all at the same time, like, well, you need to come down here, talk to us, talk to Randy Sams in the city, like, we're doing it. Yeah, do, you know, do that anyway. If, yeah. if, if you're moved to help in any way at all, Come get a little bit more information. I know Cody would be happy to talk to her, Miss Elena, about the programs here at Mission. Uh, Miss Jennifer over at Randy's out there at um, mm -hmm. the Family Shelter, Salvation Army. Find out a little. Yep. Get the information as to what's available, and that will help you help people. Right. I think. Right. And so, I do. I do want to say just one more time that uh, TTPD and the police they are the ones enforcing this. Man, they're on our side. They are on the homeless side. They, they are. Um, because, I mean, you've been out, you've kind of gone out, I mean, through the muddy, muddy creeks and everything else out here, letting folks know this is, this is the they new law. They get plenty of notice. Yeah. And it's not like if I'm going to move my house. Oh, yeah. It's like if you're going to take 30 minutes to pick up your stuff and move it somewhere else. And there's plenty of room out here to do that. You know, there's plenty of property in downtown, abandoned property, you know, not buildings and things like that, but just land where you can get behind something. There's plenty of it. Just be like, hidden from sight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And one more thing I will say, that there's not as many homeless people down here as most people think. That, I'm yeah. learning that lately in Texarkana, and I think our homeless people, they're visible here, but there's not an overabundance. I'm going to say that as far as, like, homeless I mean, homeless, homeless. Mm -hmm. No, no shelter, homeless. Yeah, less than twenty. Oh, I would, it's more than that. But um, I would say if you were to, you know, put me to, I would say that there's probably we're just guessing. Now, if you're if you're talking about now, there's a lot of couch surfers. You know, people well, who that's well, not, I'm going to jump from this place. But yeah, you're no, talking I'm, about people who are living on the street and want to be in a tent. Any given moment, yeah. I would say there are 30 to 50. Okay, I'd say 30 to 50. If you're talking about Texas, Canada as a whole, yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to include Texas, Arkansas, mm -hmm. and even you know a little bit yeah. around the area. Now, what so. we serve, and you know this well enough, um, we serve the uh, a large portion of what we serve are the food insecure. So that's people who get a check. Working poor. They, yep, the working poor. They get a check and it's too small to pay their bills and to buy groceries. That's why our numbers are high at the end of the month. Right, yeah. And then the first of it. the month, they when they have money, and this is another misconception, it's like, oh, it's just a bunch of entitlement down there. You can come look at our numbers, and when they have money, they buy their food, they pay right. their bills, they, pay they the do bill. all these things. Well, and uh, I can think of, I think of a dozen people right off now in that situation where 
once they pay their bills, mm -hmm. you know, they have maybe three hundred dollars left for the month. That's right. And, and so we do have grocery programs at, at the mission. There are our job training programs. Our United Way. Mm -hmm. uh, we do what? Have how many have you done this year? Three. We've already graduated three classes. Of three nursing. three CNA classes, mm -hmm. to where it, it doesn't cost these these people. I mean the. It's free. Yeah, it, 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 their uniforms, their books, all their study, shoes. their testing fees, shoes, all that stuff taken care of through the the programs, thanks to the United Way yep. and Mission Texarkana. Yeah. But there's a lot of that available down here. And the coffee, like old man and dog. You can't. You've already spent like ten minutes here without saying anything about old man and dog. You're just well, just I just doing better. <laughs> he drank some this morning too. Mm -hmm. That's why he's still awake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, listen, the, uh, the, the HB 1925, um, for folks that need to, that would like to know more about it, um, do get involved down here. Come, come meet with some or of these people. Come talk to me. Like, yeah. I'd love to explain the law. A lot of people haven't read the law. They just hear, oh, oh well, they're making illegal. homelessness yeah. illegal. That's not what it is at all. No, it's you know? camping in public mm -hmm. view, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the problem is... All this rain we get and living out here in in the woods the mosquitoes and everything so sometimes you know the setup with a tarp and a tent it looks kind of mm -hmm. maybe not how you would camp but it's uh, and I'll use a, a couple of these we know a couple of people their campsites are, are they'll even sweep the dirt oh yeah I mean they're clean 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 so I don't know why it just seems it's the ones that are in public view that are so filthy, you know, that have all the trash and, and everything stuff. laying around. Yeah. We make our dumpster available. There's some, a lot of camps near us. Mm -hmm. We tell those guys every day, if you need to throw your trash away, yeah. put it on a tarp, drag it down here, throw it in our dumpster. Yeah, get a so, they get a trash, we've had people get trash bags to do that, clean up their areas. So. Yeah, and the city, something else, and I don't know if the city has announced this or what, but we, the city uh, this year's, we're doing a litter cleanup program around town to where we're going to be able to hire some people with uh, block grant funds mm -hmm. and get them to go around cleaning up all the trash. So we're about to just we're about to go crazy, like cleaning all the litter up down here too. So and and you know creating jobs like and that's that's just it. I know more jobs are about to be created. I was saving it for last, but mm -hmm. we got a new coffee roaster coming. Oh, yeah. yeah we so do. we'll be able to go from doing three pounds at a time to doing twenty pounds. At a time, that's going to be a huge time saver, yeah. but also give us the ability to get more of these roasts out. Um, Mission Tech, how many roasts now? 12, 11, 12 mm, roasts? 11 or 12. Yeah, and shout out to First Baptist Church, Texarkana. They support our drop training program and they saw the need and they funded the roaster. So it's a huge deal. It's going to create a lot of jobs in town. It, it, it really will. We're, we're excited about what's coming with this, but. Um, I've been doing my best, boss, to to learn more on these fancy names. Yerga Chef. Mm -hmm. Yerga Chef. Is that? Am I saying it right? Yep, you said it right. Congratulations. Yeah, that's the Ethiopian. Book. That's our. Well, I just call it Ethiopian. We'll fight, but Ethiopia is my favorite of what we make. No, I think it's good. Yeah. I mean, you know, for wheat coffee. <laughs> no, it's it is very. T but here's the thing. They're all brewed so that you can taste these little nuances, the chocolatey notes, the, the nutty flavors, or, or, or even some, uh, I want to say in the Ethiopia, does it have like a little berry flavor mm -hmm. to it? Apricot. Is that what it is? You yeah. can, I mean, just, you can taste these subtle differences. Yeah. The old man and dog roast, that's my favorite because that one's, uh, you know, <laughs> no. Anne Marie's mad. I told her to put hair on your chest, but she drank it anyway. That's tough. <laughs> so. No, but do check out Sully Farms. Uh, and every, and that's the thing. Everybody drinks coffee. And um, I just say, like, if you like coffee, you like good coffee. We're not too expensive. We're priced just right oh, for fresh roasted coffee. Well, keep in mind, not only is it fresh roasted coffee, but it's single origin, small batch. I mean, there's... And it's artisan all, coffee. It's all, yeah, it's, right. it's craft coffee for sure. It's, and uh, then there's a homeless person, instead of asking for... A handout in panhandling they are in a hot room roasting this stuff and enjoying doing it as an art like it's an artisan thing and so we are employing 
and, uh, previously homeless and homeless people. And I tell that. you that uh, talking about the art of it is a perfect example of Larry Summers. He's he's our, our chief roaster for the old man and dog coffee, and and that's the thing. He's like, I'm gonna let it go for another twelve seconds this time. Mm -hmm. And I know that may not seem like a big yeah. deal, but twelve seconds a at a certain deal. at a certain temperature really changes flavors. Mm -hmm. So he he has he's he's the one that's really doctored that up to the. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But find out more at missiontexarkana.org. And if you have a gripe or a complaint or a concern about the bill, come talk to me. Like, come talk to me, um, and we can even voice it to the police, you know? Yeah, and, or, and I, I would like to, to give a shout-out to TTPD because they have gone above and beyond to make sure that everybody knows this. They don't have to call they, me every day like they do. They've even helped to find a place for some other people to move. You know I mean? They're not mm -hmm. out here trying to... Not at all. So, so we've got to appreciate that, and and but we've also got to appreciate it is the law. So and they are being the homelessness. The homeless are being provided for through Mission Texas Can and other organizations to move. And I'm not telling. No, I'm not telling them where to move. We are just telling them get out of sight, uh, stay within the bounds of the law. I think it's better. I think they like it better when they're back out of sight anyway. I, get some I, privacy. I do too. You know, that's one of the reasons. Or this is just. Again, you know, when it comes to all this uh, medical stuff, you really can't have too many ideas on your own. Mm -hmm. But it seems like, you know, in the homeless community, um, there just really hasn't been that much spread of a uh, of virus. And it's because they're kind of isolated to begin with. They don't do a lot of mall shopping or going to Walmart, you, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I don't, I don't know. It's been really weird. Like any, all the COVID we've had have been our volunteers or staff. Yeah. You know, our homeless community has been great. Like they haven't had it as far as I know. Yeah. Well, they just, you know, they're kind of socially distant anyway. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but know. yeah. It'd be interesting to look at nationwide what the homeless count is infected because see if it's consistent. Hmm. Well, hey, thank you. Yeah, man. I appreciate you taking a little time for this because it's, it's a kind of a big deal, man. Yeah. We, we want to take care of everybody that we can, but we want to do it right. Yeah, and anybody that's concerned about the homeless and wants to help, come down here yeah. and talk to us. Do come that's down the main here. Thing. Come, just come down here and find out what's happening in your backyard. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. Yep, stop me around town. I'm everywhere. So. <laughs>